Sophie, where are we going tomorrow? Los Angeles! Los Angeles! Woo! Los Angeles, California! Where, where are we going for? Cabral Keller! Braille literacy is a passport to independence for a blind child. It allows them to compete. It's the difference between whether or not they'll obtain employment and won't obtain employment. 70% of all blind individuals who are working are Braille literate. That isn't an accident. The Braille challenge to me means giving my daughter an opportunity to grow and to learn and to experience new things by coming here to California and also helping her skills in Braille so she can be a better reader. Yo, yo. I think it's incredibly important because it's not, I mean, it's not just about the competition. I mean, everyone wants to, to win, but everyone who comes here, I think, knows that it's a promotion of Braille literacy, which is something that is sadly becoming obsolete, and it can't because it, it's basically the equivalent, it would, it would be the equivalent of print becoming obsolete, and that's just unimaginable. Yes, this is my fourth year in the challenge. Um, I like the, my favorite activity is probably speed and accuracy. It's just great sitting in that room and hearing all the brailers going and it's just, it's really funny. Too many uh, uh, adults uh, you know, comment on how they wish that they would have been taught Braille and how frustrated they are. That's really what created their handicap. You know, blindness isn't the handicap. Not teaching your child the skills, the blindness skills, the travel skills, the Braille skills, the Braille fluency, that's what creates the handicap. So Robert was a premature baby. He surprised us at 25 weeks. He was barely two pounds. We weren't sure whether he was going to survive or not. He had all kinds of infections and he had to fight those. And because of those infections, he had to be put on a larger dose of oxygen. And that's what basically caused the retinopathy of uh, prematurity. Very same thing that kept him alive, basically took his sight away. I liked meeting people the best. I always do. I met some friends from the past challenges and I met some people that I knew um, that I've met on the internet for the first time. That was really cool. Um, and seeing all the younger kids too who are just starting at the challenge and how much fun they have. and. I would tell every teenager to come to this challenge. It's really a great place to meet new friends and new teachers and new role models and just to have a really awesome time. It's definitely the highlight of my summers have been the challenges when I've come. So I think everybody should come. It's worthwhile to take that, that entry level test. Just to, you know, it's just an honor to, uh, to be asked here, which is true. It's a little nerve-wracking because Marissa's in the sophomore group and it's one group higher than what she was in last year. So you, all, you never know. Every year's different. Well, that's interesting, but that's a good thing. If a child's just getting to the age level where they're entering into the proofreading contest for the first time, hopefully now, if they're a repeat competitor and they know that, they're going to go work on that skill.
We would like to extend our special thanks to Freedom Scientific for their generous support and donation of six PacMate portable PCs. Freedom Scientific is the world's leader in assistive and adaptive technology for individuals who are blind or have low vision, and their support has enabled us to offer these leading-edge accessible devices as prizes for our first-place national winners in all age groups and for our Teacher of the Year. We would additionally like to acknowledge and thank the Walter Lance Foundation for underwriting the Challenges Cash Prizes for top winners, as well as Bill Evans for his continued support of the award ceremony dinner.